We don't own our children. They are people. They are not ours. You see, the people will never understand this. Parents think their children belong to them. Not at all. What means femininity for the woman? If women want to be feminine, that means they become masculine. This is a fashion. Okay? A fashion. Came out of personal development and false teachers. I saw children who did scream to their parents. Yes. Give me the telephone, I want to stay on YouTube, I want to stay on Facebook. Give me your telephone. Or you're not going to like the answer. One of the parents is screaming to the other. The child saw what is possible. If we reward your child for doing well, this child will be terrified of not doing well. <laughs> And it will become very competitive. See? Have you ever seen 100-person connected couples? Yes, many. I didn't believe that before. Menis, welcome back in your home. Thank you. You already know that it's a huge honor to be with you. Thank you, thank you a lot. Thank you for the invitation to have this interview with you. First of all, I have a big debt for my followers. They saw I'm with you yeah. and they want to ask you some questions. Do you agree okay. with this? Yes, of course, yes. Okay. But first of all, I have a curiosity. <laughs> I saw you on TikTok. <laughs> Why TikTok is so seductive? Because it changes all the time and it matches our fast brain that wants something different all the time. I'm not addicted by now. What yeah. should I do not to become addicted with TikTok? You have to experience the addiction first. So first of all, I have to go there <laughs> yes. in the month. <laughs> yes. But it's dangerous. I really don't want to go there because I, I am already addicted to Facebook. And not too much on Instagram. Why, why you call it addiction? Because I feel sometimes I'm not free by scrolling. Everybody now is addicted to the phone or games or something. Everybody. Look at the children nowadays. They own the phones all the time. And how should we raise our kids? Not, not my kids, because I don't have kids, but how should the people raise their kids as long as social networks uh, be become a danger, I think. So you, you want to know how to bring up your kids in the future? <laughs> <laughs> no, for my followers. <laughs> oh, I see, okay. okay. For my future followers, let's say. I can uh, give you a very short answer and then We can waste time on a longer answer after. <laughs> the best way to raise your kids is to work on yourself. Nothing else. But if they scream for the uh, telephones, they scream. Okay, if you work on yourself, you can handle it. So you should hide your telephone? Not at all. If you work on yourself, you can handle any situation. But what would you recommend? <laughs> to work If a on couple yourself. comes to you. <laughs> <laughs> to work on yourself. You see, you can't deal with anything in the world if you're not stable. If I'm stable, whatever my children do, I can fix it. If I'm not stable, I will ask for advice like you're asking me now. So the person who's right to you, asking a question, they need to work on themselves. You see, the parents have a big problem with the children. But yeah. I have a question. Yes. What is the worst thing mm -hmm. a parent can do to their children? Is to have expectations of what the children should be like. This is the worst? Absolutely, totally. All the children suffer because the parents want them to be something they cannot be. You want your children to be successful? Yes. Why? Because it's good for them, I think. No, but it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good for them. What is bad to be good for me? <laughs> it's good for you is to put their photos in Facebook and tell children 
people that I have a fantastic children, they speak many languages, they are wonderful, they're successful, because you measure your success and self-worth by how good your children are. So it means the parents should be indifferent? Your job as a parent is to bring them to this life and let them live their own life when they are capable to do so. Starting with what age? Once they reach the age 18, yes, they make their own decisions absolutely entirely without you. Before 18, you make the decision to make them safe. And that's all. You give them education, food and home, and that's it. But the, the, the confusion here, you do the best you can, but how they turn out to be is not your business. You understand? Mm -hmm. we, we don't own our children. They are people, they are not ours. You see, the people will never understand this. Parents think their children belong to them. Not at all. They just, our job is to take care of them until they're capable of taking care of themselves. But they will have a different life than us. And this is what parents can never accept. And there are many reasons for that. One of the main reasons is we are attached for them to have a good life, and for many parents, they have the good life we never had. Yes? And then we put pressure on them. We must uh, accept that the new generation is taking the world forward, not backward. And they will do things that we can never accept or agree. If the child listens to their parents, you know, when they get a bit older, and do everything that you want, evolution will not happen. You see, maybe your parents will not accept what you do. You, now. But you are doing things that may be required by evolution, who knows? The, the life will stop if our children follow us to the older way. Life has to move on. But we are stuck. We want everything to stay the same. When a parent should be a tough guy, bad. For example, if a child, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, has contact with drugs. Yes. A young teenager, for example. Right. Yes. What should the parent do? When a child has contact with drugs, is the parent's problem. They did something. So if Maybe not enough tough. No, no, no. You go, you go into the end of the line, I'm going to the beginning of the line, the parents should ask themselves, why my children are taking drugs? Why? It's to do with the relationship with the children. This is terrible, what I'm saying, and very hard. Parents would not want to hear this. What, what is addiction about? Lost connection. So I have to connect to something else. So they have lost connection with the parents. Because the parents traumatize them in their own connections. So the most logical thing is, is to take drugs. Do you think drugs are good for something? Uh, I don't think it's useful in any way because it, it destroys people's lives. But that's not the issue. The issue is why are they taking drugs? It's, it's amazing. Countries are making wars against drugs, yes? They should make something else before the war. Look how it started in the first place. Yeah. Situation in Ukraine, okay? That's not the problem. What happened before the war started is the problem, you see? We, you and I are responsible for the war in Ukraine. Why? Because we are in denial about taking responsibility. Parents are in denial about taking responsibility. The whole world is emotional about people taking drugs, about the war. We, we get caught into our fantasies about peace, but we are creating the war. 
the whole world in the world, in the whole world, started in our relationship with our parents. All the worlds? The whole world. If you the are, parents are guilty for everything? The parents are guilty because they were children before. But who's going to stop this? Who? And when? When you work on yourself and become conscious and you stop blaming them. It's very easy to blame our parents. And they blame the children? Well, if you blame anybody, you will never succeed. It is very difficult to make peace, I think, between parents and children. It is very difficult to face the truth. The truth is I am traumatized in my childhood. If I spend all my life to take drugs or blame my parents, I am joining the destruction of our world. You can say Putin is traumatized. You can say America is traumatized. And you can say Ukraine is the children. Putin started the war because he is traumatized? Of course. And America also. They are the parents. And Ukraine is the children. America is interfering in every country in the world. And Russia also interfering. And who are the victims? The children. It's amazing that in 2022, a war started with uh, guns and with tanks, because I, I thought it's impossible nowadays to start a classic war. Mm -hmm. I expected that we should reach Mars planet, not to reach a classic war. This war is a reflection of our life, our own life. If we are stable, this war will not happen. It will not happen. Don't you think it's about the dictator? Yes, dictator is chosen by the people. But uh, if, he's, or if he or she are not democratically elected? Dictator, does elect? dictator exists because the people choose them. Why there's no dictators in England? Because they are democratic. No. They have a tradition. No, no, no government in England can control the people. The, the, the government, they are smarter? No, not necessarily. The government you have exists as a reflection of the people. If people respect themselves, yes, and honest with the families and treat themselves with love and kindness, no dictator can destroy them. Nobody. I think it's about education. Oh, yeah, you can say that, of course. It's yeah. about traumas, but... Yes, it's all going back to the same issue again. The government's always a reflection of the people. If the country is full of corruption and mafia, you need a dictator to control them. If people are at peace, what is the purpose of the dictator? Dictate what? Like Arab countries, they have to have dictatorship. They have to. Why? Because they are tribes, yes? And the structure of the culture, it has to be somebody controlling the others. Otherwise, they cannot agree on anything. And now, now, I don't want to divert too much. The West trying to teach the Arab democracy as a religion. Why? Because can, can democracy is the best system ever created. Who said so? Mm. It's a new religion. Yes, but it is the best. Because you've been told that. How do you know? It's better to live in the United States than to live in, I don't know, in okay. China. All right, you want to go there? In the United States, when you leave your house in the morning, it's a lottery. You can be shot anytime. 
What kind of democracy is this? Did you know that? More people get shot in shopping malls than in the streets than any other country in the world. Is this, is this better? No, the system has uh, bad things and shadows. But I prefer uh, this type of democracy than, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you could say that. But why, why America is interfering in every country in the world? Why people agree to this? Because I think the people love America because America is one of the uh, most developed countries in the world. It's the policeman of the world. America is the policeman of the world. Sometimes do you know we how need many, police. Do you know how many people in America sleep in the streets? Thousands and thousands. Uh, homeless and have no money to eat. And they're sending 10 billion dollars to Ukraine. Is this democracy? As I told you, I prefer America. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's start the questions okay. and change the topic. <laughs> okay. okay, first yes. of all, how do you know you have a depression? Depression does not exist. Exist. Like, you know you have depression because you've been told there is something called depression. Yes, but there are a lot of people I, you know, who we have signs of depression. We, we, I talked about this once before and, and somebody went crazy on Facebook attacking me. What is depression? What is it? <sighs> the word... When you see everything in grey, in black colors. Uh, uh, slow down. The word depression is a very interesting word in English. It means deprived of a connection. That's this. When, but when, when you really feel very, very sad, but yes. you don't have reasons to feel sad. There is it a reason. Mean... There, there is a reason. Because nobody is connected to you. This is the reason. It's, uh, every conversation we'll have will have the same core trigger for us. Yeah, I will say it again. Our brain cannot function alone. It's the only organ in the body that has to be interactive. Every part of your body can function without other people. But your brain cannot. When we don't have this interaction, yes, we start manifesting different things. And I can tell you from now, uh, any psychologist or doctor listening to this will get very upset. All these names are not what happens. We invented these names. When, when we see a condition of somebody low, angry, sad, suffering, we have to put a name on it so we can control it. We made all these names up. Names up. I think I, I mentioned that before to you. When I was in Egypt, we didn't know what depression is until 1960. And then people came from Europe and told us there is an illness called depression. Everybody started to get depressed. And then we start buying medicine for depression. But before we were told, there was no such a thing. It's only a word. So all these names, they are, they don't, don't mean what they are. How can you treat these kind of feelings? To treat this depression, this word? People cannot be alone. Everybody depressed is alone in their mind. Or they are with somebody, but they are not with the person. They are alone in their world. They do not accept love or they cannot love somebody. And as simple as this. Loneliness is a damage. I, I, yeah, you can call it damage, yes. You can. Which is your biggest dream? Me? Yes. I have no dreams. Desire? No. Aim? Nothing. Maybe to live longer? I did, I did be before. I did before. Actually, my last dream was to live longer, but I'm not sure about this anymore. I just want to enjoy every day I'm living. Why sometimes we avoid in, to enjoy? 
we try to, to, to hide the joy in our life. For example, uh, after I, I, I have been to a match, Chelsea, Londra, yeah. and after that I, I felt there very happy. And after that I tried to hide his joy. I yeah. felt there. Well, let's go around the question a little bit. Um, I keep reminding myself every day, and I, I miss sometimes, yes, that this life is a temporary, temporary existence. It's a fact that we don't want to face. We won't be here in the end. So we are here like, let's say, like a holiday. Yeah. It's a short time. 70, 80, 90 years is not a very long time. Yes? Okay. What do you want to do at this time? Anything you're trying to achieve is not coming with you. You're not going to take it with you. Any money, you're not going to take it with you. Nothing will take with you. So let's imagine it's a holiday, yes? So when you go on holiday, who you take with you? Some t-shirts, <laughs> <laughs> the telephone, a ball. You want to make it a holiday from hell or heaven. Make sure you take the right people with you on holiday. But enjoy everything. There is no, you see, I, I, I never used to think like this before, really. And sometimes I slip, I, I forget, and I think I'm going to live forever. We are, we need to be here now, in this moment, here now. Enjoy this moment. That's all we need to do. Yes, but it's very complicated. No, it's not complicated if you conscious. The reason we have problems, yes, because we cannot, uh, we're not able to cope with life. It's distracting us from knowing that this time will be over. Let's suppose, I yes. decide, I try unconscious to provoke the person. To, to create a hell, not yes. to be in the heaven, in that heaven. Okay, let, let's just correct it, correct what I said a little bit. This moment talking to you is a holiday. Holiday doesn't happen when you go to holiday. Every day is a holiday. You see what I mean? So, you go there, but before you go, you're already on a holiday. You just move into different places. It's like this. You understand it? Mm -hmm. This moment for us can be holiday. Why not? What should I do to, to become a little bit more conscious? Because I think I'm uh, very conscious if I compare with the others. But to be a little bit more, to be a little bit more conscious, what should I do? <laughs> I know, you I, I know you when I ask, what should I do, what should I do? You dislike this. You, do you want to really be conscious? You will be conscious when you stop asking me these questions. <laughs> <laughs> when you ask these questions, you make yourself not conscious. I feel I become a little bit more when I read books. Uh, okay, you, you, you continue. If what is the secret for a perfect relationship? Perfect relationship. There is no connection. Perfect. There is no perfect relationship. The question is a problem. The fact you want perfect relationship, you have problem. I have a question from a good <laughs> friend, Vasile. Uh, he was know. in your advanced. Vasile. Oh yeah, yeah. Vasile yeah. Vasile okay. Nistel. Yeah, yeah. He told me to ask you. Yes. What can you say to someone mm -hmm. that has nothing to lose? Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Only this? Yes. Why do I run after love and I can't wait for it to find me? Uh, is this you? No, it's uh, 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 the same. <laughs> yes. A lot of people uh, want that the love find them. When people ask me questions, yes, 
I am interested in the person, not the question. Do you understand? They have the power to scan the people. No, 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 not. Uh, not. We the others don't have this gift. The the question is coming from a consciousness uh, an assert of of a person. So this person who's asking this question, I don't know who the person is, but this person, maybe, maybe. Uh, living in some kind of a fantasy, something he they read. You see? And they came up with a question like this. Everybody wants to be loved, yes? And I'm very curious, why he's saying, waiting for love to find me? It's something like a song or something, or a, read it in a book or something. You don't like romantic hmm? people? Because there are, there are a lot of romantic people. I don't like them. <sighs> They are too sensitive. I think. This is going to open uh, uh, another conversation. But uh, if you want love, do you have to find it, or do you have to wait for it to find you? Do you have to do any of that? I really don't like it's to speak very, about love sometimes. It's, it's a very strange question. It's very strange. And also, if this person talking to me now, I'll ask him or her. What do you mean by love exactly? What do you mean? I think to feel safety, first of all. Yes. Let's go back again to what we were trying to speak for a while. Nowadays, maybe um, because there's so many apps on the phone to find relationships and love, people get mixed up. That they think it's a task to find to find love uh, mechanically like this. But we, ha we are already love in ourselves. And uh, in previous interview you asked me something and I said when a student is ready, the master appears. When you are ready to love somebody, the person will appear. That's all. The question is very, the question revealed a person personality, actually. So it's, it's kind of a tricky question. Nowadays I invested in an application mm -hmm. about femininity. Mm. What means femininity for the woman? If women want to be feminine, that means they become masculine. This is a fashion. Okay, a fashion. Came out of personal development and false teachers. I'll go back to what we said before. When women suffered injustice by men, and suffered by men, yes, they have become masculine. Because they joined the man's world. Let's talk about the feminine movement, yes? You know about the feminine movement? Yes. Yeah? This movement was against men. So women were fighting to be feminist, yes? The woman consciousness is not a fighter. A man is a fighter. Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. The feminist movement should start by men, not by women. We should fight for them to be feminine. They do not fight. Women's quality is not to fight. Man's quality is to fight. If a woman starts fighting, she is not feminine anymore. So fighting for femininity is masculinity. If you are feminine, you don't try to be feminine. If you're masculine, you don't try to be masculine. You are. Mm -hmm. So, men who are fighting for masculinity, they are feminine. You, if you are free, yes, you don't fight for freedom. Only if you're in prison, you fight for freedom. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Why would I fight to be masculine? What for? I am. So if I fight for freedom inside myself, it means I am in a prison. Exactly. But you see, the, the problem is much bigger than that. People are teaching us things, yes? And the world going to waves of fashion. You see, the fashion at the moment, at the moment, is motivations. Find your purpose. You're successful. You can achieve. 
And another fashion came in, women must be feminine. They already are. They are, you look at the woman, she's feminine, what? But when a woman fight men, when you fight a person, you become like them. They will make themselves masculine. Yeah? And, and some men now trying to be sensitive and gentle. Why? It's not our nature. A man is a fighter. This is, this is who we are. You see? But some uh, women pretend that femininity is a, a sacred gift and have to protect this it is, sacred gift. It is a sacred gift. If you don't talk about the gift, you have it. You don't walk around and say, I have a sacred gift. You have it already. I don't walk around and tell people I'm rich. Because I am. Do you have a couple ha uh, have more chances to be connected if the girl, the woman, is more feminine? Well, you see, uh, it, let, let, I reply in a different way. Every man needs a woman. Every woman needs a man. When I see a masculine woman, I don't like it at all. It's very scary. A masculine woman? Of course. They want to... The way they want to be masculine, to be forced. But we, we've talked about it. It's, it's an illusion. And actually, in, in another way, I, do, I don't blame them. Because they, they have suffered injustice and they stand enough for themselves. It, the, the masculinity in women is a reaction. Because it's a misunderstanding. Women have become stronger. But the, some misunderstood thinking to be strong is like a man. So they became stronger in a mas masculine way. But their strength is in femininity. And now they're trying to, they're trying, not everybody of course, to claim their femininity back. Yes? But they don't, you don't need to claim, it, to claim it back because you are. They are already. Sometimes I feel this is the biggest dream of a woman. To be stronger, to be harder, to be tough. A strong person, the ultimate stress is love. In a relationship, the strongest person is the one who loves the most. Not masculine or feminine. It seems to be a weak point for men when they hear this, this is, to love more. This is the things we are learning from people who have just ideas and we're listening to them. The world is in danger now from teachings, you know this. A lot of people saying all different things and so many people are naive. And they, even what we're talking, this is our view at the moment, maybe, we, maybe we're not correct. People are so naive, they believe everything. And when do you know we are mature, not naive? My feeling is, you always know. You always know. but you accept things because they're in your advantage. Like some religious teaching. You see, religion is okay. The problem with the religious people, you understand? They go to the ideas that serve them. So they want to believe it because it support their, what their desire. You see? See, if I am, if I have a problem with women, yes, personally, because my mother was this and all that kind of thing, I will spend all my life telling people women are aggressive and, and masculine. Because they have an agenda. You see what I mean? And the women who are anti-men, they had problems with their parents, with their father. Not all. So they have, we have an agenda. Uh, let's go back in the couple. Yeah. Why the men don't want to be known that they love more and the woman the same, don't want to be known by the others that they love more? Because it's a fight uh, not to love more. 
If you truly love a person, you have to experience humility. But maybe you will receive a big ignore from the woman or from the man. This is the they, risk. They, this is the risk you have to take. Because I don't think uh, women need humble men. The, the pride, we are mixing things up. To love a person, it's, it's my long journey to learn this, is to risk everything. Risk me even. But for, for sure, you will lose. Why would you risk everything? You will never lose. For Be sure you will lose? No, because if the person does not respect your love, yes, you win, you don't be with them. You cannot lose. But maybe he or she mm. is not aware of this. And you risk too much, I think, uh, as long as you have near mm. you a woman or a man mm -hmm. who doesn't understand the things, who are not conscious enough. Oh, you will know. It is very simple because I worked with a lot of couples. There, there is a priority in, 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 in this relationship. The universe or life will give you feedback all the time. When small things start to go wrong, your love is not too strong. The person doesn't have to be aware. I think it's too poetic. All day long I see confused men and women. Yes, because they, they are they have a great time together. But how could they understand what love is? They will understand when they punish each other enough. <laughs> yes, yes, this is how it works. In a metaphoric way. No, no, no. No? No. So everybody should suffer. Most second marriage is better than first one. Mm -hmm. In most cases. People learn. We learn peace after war, not before. You see? So we need the war? Not necessarily. Some people learn this, this way. How are we going to learn without making mistakes? We could, but we don't want, I think, most of, in the most of cases. Yes, but you see, if I am ignorant, yes, I will make mistakes. And through my mistakes, I will learn. See? Have you ever seen 100% connected couples? Yes, many. I didn't believe that before. I did, but I have seen yes. And uh, do you think they have any chance to split the relationships as long as they uh, succeed in connected? I want to ask you a question. Why are you asking all these questions? <laughs> Because the conversation yes. gone there. What are you looking for by asking this question? Mm. Maybe, I it told you, maybe it understand. I, I target the person, not the question. So, you're trying to tell me something. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Um, I'm waiting. I think... I don't believe in this... Um, mm. In this poetic... No, you don't believe in relationship. No, I don't believe in 100% connected relationships. When you ask me these questions, I am more interested in that than the questions. In you. You see, you are trying to tell me something. You are mm. trying to tell but me. But I have never, I have never met a fully connected couple. And I'm curious uh, how it would like. Why don't you ask me? I would like to learn how to be connected. Wouldn't it be better? Because I'm afraid. Can I mention a sentence I said before? If you truly, truly love and want to be loved, you have to experience humility. Can you? I can, but as I told you, sometimes it didn't work at all. Yes, if it didn't work, doesn't mean it's not going to work ever. Something in my body doesn't want to try these methods. Yes. I, I understand. I reject, I reject this 
these uh, strategies. I totally understand. This is the part of you that was never made safe by your parents. To say it directly, to explain? I have no exposure to mother and a child close to me. And I see children with their parents. And I see a child cry and scream and become a mess. And in a second moment, they're laughing and happy. Why a child is not afraid to do this? And a child cry, make a drama, and look stupid, and they know the mother's not going to leave them. These things happened before, very early. We're talking about something different. We're talking about shame. Yes. That's what we're talking about, actually. Shame is set up very early in life by neglect or disconnection. Sometimes I prefer to to burn inside than to try new methods. You, you are doing this outside. Outside where? Outside of yourself. Everything you're creating outside, you're doing this. You're experimenting with new things outside. Yes. But not inside. Mm, I think outside uh, reflects the mirror from, out, from inside, I feel, sometimes. Exactly. Because I, I, I'm... Sometimes I don't have any reason to be sad. Well, you know, the, the most amazing people in the world, the great achievers, they miss very simple things. It's to be loved by somebody. You will be loved by the whole world, outside, but not inside. Have you ever told your partner that you need her? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm smiling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will not put this on YouTube because everybody <laughs> wants to help me. I will delete this. <laughs> Email. It's easier. Why it's easier to text messages uh, than to speak? You're safe, very safe. When you speak to a person, look in their eyes. You're exposed. When you love a person, or make a step towards the person. Yes? You do it for you, not for them. You, you understand this? Mm -hmm. That means whatever they do is okay. And if you don't want to hear the words that hurt you? You do it for you, nothing will hurt you. You do it for you. You understand? You love a person because you are loving. It doesn't matter what they do. If you knew you had just one day to live on this planet, how would you spend it? How would I spend it? I celebrate the opportunity I had to be in this world. And how exactly? Step by step. <laughs> Whatever needs to be done to celebrate, I bring all the people I love and thank them for the meeting them. And I will be so looking forward to enter a new mystery. Would you cry in the last minutes? I think uh, uh, I don't know what's going to happen because it didn't happen yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another question. I actually thought about your question before a lot. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. How can you say no to your children without feeling guilty? If you truly know how to love your children, you will never feel guilty. When you articulate these you, words. You can say no to anybody with love. Anybody. And this question is tricky because if I want my children to love me, I will feel guilty. If I'm confident of my love for them, I will never feel guilty. But the parents need a lot 
the love of the children. Yeah, that's why all parents feel guilty. Because they try to learn how to love? This is probably something you will ask me later, but it's impossible, impossible to control how a person can love you. If I want my children to love me, yes, it will be a disaster, absolute disaster. That means I am not willing to let them go. There is a sentence, uh, very important, uh, I want to say. Our, in our relationship with our children, there is no payback. You know what I mean? No. Your investment is a loss. It's not a good business. You pay, you don't get back. But most of the parents need a retirement, a business retirement. That's why they're suffering. That's why they feel guilty. Because when they say no, they want the money back later. So they will be afraid to say no or feel guilty to say no. There is no payback. This is a very bad investment. The parents feel that they risk to say no to the children? Yes, because they want to pay back. See, if I say no to you, you're not going to do anything for me. And if I want to do something for me, I feel guilty by saying no to you. You see what I mean? Your love has to be unconditional for your children. This is very hard lessons. Very hard. Did you understand? But it's very hard for the parents um, to feel that the children forgot the help. I think children will choose what they want to do with the love you give them. They will choose. If they choose not to appreciate your love, yes, they will learn from their children. If the children love you and devote their life to you, it's, I call it, it's the icing on the cake. You know what I mean? You call it here the cherry on the cake, whatever you call it in Romania. But you give with no return. If you ask me a question, why we have kids, I tell you this is the reason, is to learn this. Parents invest in the children for the future. Children are not an investment. You pay, you don't get back. And the children invest in relationships when they grow up. Well, if, if you... Is the same kind of investment? It's the same, it's the same. The, the, the thing is that, that, that we go around in circles. Your relationship with your parents, the same as your relationship with your children, the same as your relationship with your partner. All the same. In fact, relationship with everybody. But partner and children and parents are more intense because you can't get rid of them. You can get rid of your friends, but not, not your parents, not your children. So, so always you are thinking to return in the future. Return what? I don't know, maybe... What is the child's fault to bring him to the world and give him something and he wanted back? They didn't ask. You asked. Take this further. Why you have children? For you or for them? For you, most of the parents. Yeah, for you, yes? Yes. So why you want something from them? You already received it. But the parents uh, tell that the, ch the children are the most important treasure in the world. Okay, so you have already received it. You, you just said it, you have already received it from them. So why you want more? What would you advise people to have children or not have children? <laughs> Is it people or you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
Also, the people also for me. <laughs> I, th- I, I, I will we'll discuss this a bit. If you plan to have children, yes, I don't recommend it. They should come when you're ready and just come. But if they come in a mistake? Yeah. There is it's no not mistake. a wish. There is no mistake. There is no mistake. How can it be a mistake? You sleep with somebody. Is that a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> But maybe you don't you, want, you want children to sleep with, with someone. Person, is that a mistake? If you don't want children with someone, it's not the same. You want to sleep with them. But you want to sleep not to have children. You, you see, children give you a, a fantastic opportunity. You know what it is? You learn responsibility. That's a lesson worth a lot of money. You bring somebody to this life, it's a responsibility. You finish the job. I have a good friend, Pera Novakovic, who admires you a lot, and he told me his daughter is his teacher. Yes. But I don't understand. I don't really understand what he's trying to transmit me. Well, he's trying to tell you that he suffered a lot, <laughs> and, he's, <laughs> and he's learning from his children. When you, when you say my children or my teacher is a, is a double-edged sword, okay? It's got two conflicting messages. Some people suffered. I, I, it happened to me from a difficult fate for our children. Some children don't, don't make it, yes? And the parents suffer for their fate. But through the suffering for our children, we learn about life. This is one way. Other way, some parents listen to the children, and they're trying to be very wise and spiritual and enlightened until I'm learning from my children. Mm. It's, it's kind of uh, a show. It's a fake. A fake, yes. Mm-hmm. What should the parent do when his child has a tantrum? Okay. Children, yes, live in your house. The house has an atmosphere, yeah? The atmosphere in the house is made up by the parents' unconscious and conscious, yes? When something is difficult in the house, the children will react, yes? Because they cannot speak and articulate. The, the child cannot come home and tell you, I don't feel comfortable about what you say and how you treat my mom or what you do this. So the way they speak to you is through their behavior. So the tantrum is a signal to the parents something is not right. So if you go and treat the tantrum, yes, you are going the wrong direction. So the tantrum is a symptoms of the relationship between the parents or something else going in the house that the child has picked up but cannot articulate. So the easiest way for the child is to show the parents communication by their behavior. So the question is, is difficult because you go and treat the tantrum, yes? I, what can happen? If you fix it, another child will create a tantrum or it will come back later because you're actually not treating the cause, you're treating the symptoms. So the question is, it's actually misleading. I saw children who did scream to their parents. Yes. Give me the telephone, I want to stay on YouTube, I want to stay on Facebook, give me your telephone. Or you're not going to like the answer. One of the parents is screaming to the other. The child saw what is possible. and they learn how to get what they want. If one person is bullying the other to get what they want or controlling the other, the child says, oh yeah, that's a very good idea. I'll do the same. But the parents, what should do in this uh, time? Respect each other 
and love each other enough so they can deal with the child. Should they speak more with the, ch the children? No. If, if you're married to a person and have kids, the way you treat your partner will reflect on the children. You better, you see, it's wonderful. This is one of the beauty of having kids. They will keep correcting you. Yeah, but parents will never admit there's something wrong with them. You see, if the child is diagnosed by a condition or something, the children, the parents are off the hook. They will never face themselves. So now the child has become a victim. The, the child who's angry, traumatized, have tantrum, is a victim of the parents' relationship. Parents will don't like this at all. Because I said before, the hardest thing in the world for me to admit is something wrong with me. Would you give to your three-year child a telephone? That, that's not the problem. I may or may not. That's not the problem. My, my problem is how I am dealing with the mother of the child in my life. You see, if my partner and I are in total peace and harmony, yes, we can deal with the situation very easily. But if my wife want to give him the phone and I don't want to give him the phone, and I say yes, and I don't like it, there's a, there's a problem. And this is the case. One person doesn't agree with the other. And one person compromise and one person cont control the other. This is a dynamic in the house. And the child has a, a, a gift to get what they want because the parents are split. Uh, it's, it's very important to get this because parents focus, focus on a child, they don't focus on themselves. In most cases, something is going, why would the child do something like this for no reason whatsoever? Why? They are a mirror to the parents. The children are mirroring the parents. Mirroring the situation. But because they cannot, as I said, they cannot speak. They cannot have a conversation like you and I now. They don't have the intellectual capacity to actually tell, you're doing this and I don't like it. They don't know what to do. So they, they, they act it out. But when the parents start punishing them and relaxing and punishing them, it turn into a behavior problem later. And it reaches a point of no return. And then they are in trouble. Because when, when things escalate and the child starts to get traumatized by the situation, then punishment and reward don't work. Reward doesn't work? Not at all. If we reward your child for doing well, this child will be terrified of not doing well. <laughs> and it will become very competitive. You see, if you want to reward your child, give him a reward without doing anything. The two reward and punishment are the same. But I love you or good things, good words. He, are not their word. You love them for no reason whatsoever. You love them when they fail, you love them when they succeed, you love them when they do nothing. This is the true love. It's not a conditional love. I wish I knew all these things before. I always say, I wish I met someone like me many years ago. You need to provoke love in someone to be loved. You can only love if you are a loving person. That's the answer. You can help a person to heal the lack of ability to love or to learn how to love or the inability that they are not loved. You can help a person to heal, but you cannot make them love you. Can you learn to love? Of course, but you need somebody. Not by yourself? Not by yourself, impossible by yourself. Because the love involved uh, interaction with somebody else.